The world around us is there for us to explore, whether that be up and out in space or looking at incidents a little closer to home. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at mysterious and interesting discoveries. Hikers find mystery skeleton on remote mountain in California. Back in 2019, two hikers stumbled across a rather unpleasant discovery that would soon change the tone of their hiking trip. Hikers, Brandon Follin and Tyler Hoffer, were hiking across the Sierra Nevada mountain. The 14,000-foot hike is a tourist attraction, bringing in experienced adventurers from throughout America though when the pair deviated from their route, about three hours away from the peak, they found what appeared to be a human skull between boulders just off of the trail. Follin states, My first thought was maybe it was a prop or something like you see in a science class. Unfortunately, a closer inspection revealed other bones throughout the clearing, and beneath some boulders, an almost entirely undamaged human skeleton, equipped with what were once leather shoes and a belt. The sun exposure had resulted in a bleaching effect, making the skull appear incredibly white, after what could have been years outside. The pair's first choice of action would have been staying beside the remains, not touching them and phoning the appropriate authorities. However, being 12 miles into the next day of their trek and three hours from the mountain summit, there was no phone service to make the call. Unsure as to the appropriate actions, the pair kept a record of what they had seen, photographing the bones, the skeleton, and only touching one foot to capture a clearer photo. Once they made it to the top of their journey, Follin and Hoffer were able to call 911 and fill them in on the bizarre turn of events. Just days later, the California Highway Patrol helicopters managed to successfully track down and remove the skeletal remains. Following this startling finding, the investigators from the Inyo County Sheriff's Office aimed to identify who this missing hiker was, what exactly prevented them from getting any further than this spot in what has been dubbed the bowl and how long they had been there for. The bowl refers to the last bit of the hike that leads to the top of Mount Williamson. Tin Lee Trung, an employee at Elevation Sierra Adventure Essentials, completed the hike two years prior to this discovery. He explained that the hikers must hop between sharp boulders, that dropping your phone means making peace with it being gone forever, and twisting your ankle means accepting a bitter, painful defeat, or as he said, you're done for. He said all of this is truer if the hiker took a less direct, more remote path, where it is even less likely you could be found or helped. The next stage in this research involved an analysis of the remains, a forensic anthropologist, Alison Galloway, a professor emerita of anthropology at the University of California, Santa Cruz, explained that the timeline for a body to decay to a skeleton is not linear. This is dependent on a number of factors, perhaps most significantly the temperature of the area and the insects in the area. For example, in a warm climate with specific flies, a body could have decayed to a skeleton within just six months, whereas a cold environment would preserve the body for longer. Dr. Galloway and other investigators expressed the want for soft tissue to be present, as this, within just a few months, could answer questions about the timeline of the death. Using only bones, however, makes figuring out more specific years a much more difficult process. Other clues could lie within the shoes and belt, as well as the physical remains. New measures like carbon-14 testing can also help answer some questions if soft tissue is not present on the body. Following this, DNA testing from hair, ear bones or teeth can be correlated to see if there is a match on any existing missing persons reports. So far, no missing persons reports have matched up with the location of the skeleton. The sheriff's office spokeswoman said there was no evidence of foul play. Follin and Hoffer reported a dent in the skull, appearing fractured and the position of the body indicated that it may have been laid out as if it were buried. They did, however, admit their lack of forensic knowledge. The sheriff's office has denied all of the above, labeling Follin and Hoffer's claims as inaccurate. Despite all the speculation, 
there are no concrete answers surrounding this mystery skeleton. The hiking trip gone amiss is sure to stick with these young hikers for decades to come. Unexplained Bones of Henderson Island Undisturbed in the eastern South Pacific, Henderson Island is considered one of the world's best remaining examples of a pristine elevated coral atoll whose ecology has nearly avoided the influence of humans. It is the last remaining atoll in the world with a pristine forest and a biologically diverse ecosystem that has not felt the negative impact of human disturbance. Fresh water is scarce on the island, and the terrain is made up of jagged rock and dense thicket, making it unsuitable for agriculture or human habitation. It was a miracle that the shipwrecked crew of the American whaling ship Essex was able to survive on the island for several months between 1820 and 1821 before their rescue. While in mid-ocean, the whaling ship was sunk by a mighty 40-foot sperm whale which is thought to be the inspiration for Herman Melville's Moby Dick. The survivors escaped on a small boat and sailed towards Henderson Island. Once there, four crew members stayed on the island while the rest sailed off in an endeavour to reach South America. Those left on the island had no food and no fresh water. They would not have survived without a few lucky rainfalls that provided drinking water. However, they struggled to find food without the ability to hunt or fish. To sustain themselves, they had to suck the blood of the birds they could catch and would eat any turtles they could find on the shore. To shelter themselves from the elements, they stayed in caves formed by nature among the rocks. In one cave, they found six complete skeletons that were laid side by side neatly, almost as if they had planned to die together. This was a strange find on an uninhabited island, and it was assumed they were the remains of another shipwrecked crew. In 1958, nearly 140 years later, another six skeletons were found on a separate part of the island. In an effort to respect the dead, the bones were always left untouched, except for the samples of hair taken from the skulls in an attempt to identify the bodies. It was not until 1992 that a researcher, Dr. Wiesler, took parts of the skeletons to his lab to analyze and determine that all the human remains were actually from prehistoric Polynesians that were thought to have lived on the island at one time. Lava Lake is discovered on Subantarctic Island. The July of 2019 saw the uncovering of a lava lake on the remote Saunders Island, and despite there being approximately 1,500 volcanoes on Earth, Mount Michael on Saunders Island is only the eighth in the world to be confirmed as having a lava lake. The discovery of the volcano was reported in the journal entitled Volcanology and Geothermal Research in early July 2019. This was the first volcano with a lava lake to have been identified in the remote series of South Sandwich Islands. This finding was made using satellite imagery. In 2001, low-resolution satellite data proved to have an anomalous result in it, but the low-resolution and limited frame rate could not prove that there was a lava lake on Saunders Island. With more advanced technology capturing shots more frequently and at higher resolutions, Images collected between 2003 and 2018 have uncovered the lava lake, spanning 90 to 215 meters in diameter, with the lava hitting the soaring temperatures of 1,279 degrees Celsius. Whilst the stereotypical image of volcanoes spewing out lava is not inaccurate, there is often lava when they erupt. The pools of molten rock these form is usually only temporary. After the eruption, within a matter of days or weeks, this liquid lava pool will dry into solid rock. Mount Michael, along with the volcanoes of Nyira Gonga in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Erta Ale in Ethiopia, Mount Erebus beside the Ross Sea, Mount Yasur in Vanuatu, Ambrim in Banatum Kilauea in Hawaii, and the Messiah Caldera in Nekawagua are the only volcanoes in the world known to always have lava bubbling away inside. This geological discovery is made all the more exciting by the inaccessible nature of Saunders Island. Very few researchers have visited this volcano, and none have ever reached the summit. Mount Michael is a fascinating, thrilling discovery, and without the high-resolution, high-quality satellite imagery, we perhaps never would have uncovered the world's eighth lava lake.
Dr. Alex Burton-Johnson from the British Antarctic Survey commented, We are delighted to have discovered such a remarkable geological feature in the British Overseas Territory. He elaborated, explaining that the increased understanding of the volcanic activity within Mount Michael had the potential to tell us about similar features elsewhere. Additionally, the discovery of Mount Michael proves we are able to monitor volcanoes from space. The development of space technology is advantageous from many angles and perspectives, including here on Earth. Swarm of 20,000 earthquakes could make Iceland's volcanoes erupt. As of late, Iceland has experienced an abundance of earthquakes and endured a lot of seismic activity, which experts fear might awaken the ancient volcanoes of the nation. Over 20,000 earthquakes have been recorded by scientists at the Icelandic Meteorological Office since February 2021, which caused an immense number of problems for citizens of the country. The majority of the earthquakes average to a magnitude of three, though some are higher. This at least means that they are not catastrophic, but can be felt and cause moral unrest, with much fear of the magnitude potentially rising as this strange occurrence continues. Iceland has a history of volcanic eruptions resulting from earthquake-like activity, heightening stress about it happening again. The Reykjanes Peninsula is most at threat, with most seismic activity happening there. The peninsula is at an orange level, meaning that it is likely to erupt. The Icelandic government confessed that there have been pulses of volcanic activity occasionally occurring since February, and this has been at an increased rate, the most notable of which occurred near Mount Kailir. But the Scientific Council for Civil Protection stands by their statement that there is no evidence of magma incoming. Although it's important to note that when this comes to volcanic activity, things can change instantaneously. An eruption, should it happen, would place the surrounding areas under great danger. Even if scientists are estimating it to only be a small eruption, it would result in undoubtable property damage from lava. There is also the potential for scientific estimation to be faulty and an impromptu eruption could be far worse than assumed. Ash could also lead to a massive problem for Iceland's tourism industry and cause issues for world aviation as well. Despite the potential risks, the Icelandic Prime Minister seems confident in Iceland's preparation for natural disasters, remarking that the country would know exactly what to do in such a situation. When interviewed about the matter, the Prime Minister stated, Iceland has highly trained, educated and experienced professionals in this area. Most importantly, the Icelandic public is used to dealing calmly with many different types of natural events related to the weather or geology. Volcanoes have power over us, just as other forms of natural disasters do. Hurricanes, tornadoes, cyclones, it is just a reminder of our mortality and limitations against the strength our planet holds. Huge methane cache beneath the Arctic could be unlocked by the Moon. Recently, scientists have found that the Moon might be affecting how much methane is being released from the sea floor at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean. Although we have known about and understood the Moon's effects on the tides for quite some time, we have yet to see many instances in which the Moon's phases can change the ocean's methane levels. In recent studies, however, scientists have concluded that low tides mean less pressure and more methane released. Conversely, high tides create more pressure, leading to diminished methane release. To find these effects, Scientists had to measure the temperature and pressure inside Arctic seafloor sediments. Their main takeaway from this study was the correlation between gas levels and the rising and falling tides. Using a permanent monitoring tool, these scientists identified methane release in an area in the Arctic Ocean where it had not previously been observed. Joshin Nees, a marine geologist at the Center for Arctic Gas Hydrate, Environment and Climate, or CAGE, said the following in a statement. It is the first time that this observation has been made in the Arctic Ocean. It means that slight pressure changes can release significant amounts of methane. This is a game-changer and the highest impact of the study. From this study's conclusions, it is clear that climate change will be affected directly by this release of methane from the Arctic Ocean seafloor. 
Why does this matter? Greenhouse gases such as methane have been proven to contribute to global warming. As more methane is released, global temperatures increase as well. Understanding how the tides can affect these seafloor methane caches is important for future climate change and global temperature predictions. In addition, the discovery of the tide's effects on the release of methane from the seafloor shows that scientists have been underestimating the Arctic's greenhouse gas emission levels. This new discovery also raises questions and concerns regarding how rising sea levels and ocean warming will interact as climate change becomes a much more pressing issue. Because high tides reduce methane emissions, it is possible rising sea levels, which come with higher tides, might partially counterbalance the threat of increased gas emissions being caused by a warming ocean. There's life in one of the hottest and most contaminated places on Earth. What do you get when you combine boiling water, high salt content, acidic heavy metals, and a pH of zero? The Dalol Geothermal Area Known for its vast, color-changing pools and strange, stalagmite-like formations, the Dalol Geothermal Area is beautiful and deadly. And despite the harsh environment, Scientists have recently discovered that it may contain and sustain some form of life. Life can even be found in the most dismal conditions. The Dalol geothermal area is located in Ethiopia and is sometimes referred to as hell on earth. The organisms that live in these conditions are called nanohaloarchaea and they can be found in other environments with extremely high salt content. Scientists recently discovered them on rock samples taken from the area. But why did scientists even go looking for life in the Dalol geothermal area? The answer lies in the age-old question, is there really life on Mars? The conditions of the Dalol geothermal area are abysmal, but scientists believe that because they were able to find life in such abysmal conditions, that they may be able to better locate life on Mars. First, they needed to find out what kind of organisms thrive in these types of conditions. This lets the scientists know exactly what kind of technology they need to use in order to detect the specific life forms. Now that they know the nanohaloarchaea can be found, they have a better understanding of what exact type of detection equipment to use when combing through the planet Mars. Now that scientists have a better understanding of the kind of organisms that are present in harsh conditions and what kind of technological equipment they need to use to find them, they can send a rover with the correct equipment to search around Mars. The Dalol geothermal area is not a new formation, so why have we not studied it before now? The field lies in a politically unstable region of Ethiopia and is not safe to travel to until recently. One question that researchers have is, does it hold the key to unlocking the secret of sustaining life on Mars? One day soon, scientists may know the answer, but the discovery and accessibility of the Dalol geothermal area is crucial to answering some of science's oldest questions. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.